You can't get into cybersecurity without experience, but you also can't get experience without working in cybersecurity. I guess you better stick around for this video so that I can provide you with ways to get some cybersecurity experience before you jump into the field. But first, if this is the first time that we're meeting, welcome to my channel. My name is John Good, and here I get to spread my passion for cybersecurity training, tips and tricks, and career advice to help you go further. Remember to smash the thumbs up to like this video, hit the subscribe button and the bell icon so you don't miss future content, and leave a comment for the YouTube algorithm. If you like my training and you want more, head on over to my website at johngood.com where you can access full training courses. If you just want to donate to support the channel, that's cool too. Visit the link in the description. You can also join me on my Discord server. The link is in the description as well. All right, let's get into the video. One of the questions that always comes up when somebody wants to get into cybersecurity is how do I get experience to qualify for cybersecurity jobs? This is especially true for people that are brand new to cybersecurity and tech jobs in general. It makes a lot of sense that this question comes up so frequently because when you go to look at job postings, you see that companies want two to five years of experience or even more for a job posting that says it's entry level. Don't fear. There are definitely ways that you can get experience before you go and get that real job experience. I'm going to walk you through some of the ways that you can start building experience and that I found over the years at a reasonable cost or even for free. If you like this content, let me know and I will actually build out this series with more hands-on tutorials on things that I mentioned in this video and some additional technologies. Let's start off with getting some experience with operating systems. In the majority of companies out there, Windows is going to be a huge part of the infrastructure. Windows is fairly easy to maintain updates and security configurations. Of course, it has to be done correctly. You can't just expect it to be done, but regular users are very comfortable with Windows, so you should be as well. We all know that Windows requires some product key or serial key in order to activate a legitimate copy. Well, the nice thing with Windows is that you can actually get a free trial or evaluation version that lasts 180 days, which is perfect for a home lab or to use when you're tinkering around trying to learn things. Easiest way to get the link is to go to Google and search Windows Server free trial. You want to download the newest version or the latest version. As of this recording, the latest version is Windows Server 2019. I recommend getting the on-premise version. That way you can have it offline and run it as a virtual machine. The reason why I recommend server is because if you know server, people will expect that you know desktop as well. Once you download and install this, now you have a legitimate version of Windows Server, which is the exact version that we use in enterprises. Honestly, some companies might not even be upgraded to this version yet, so you might be ahead of them. It takes a while for companies to migrate. Now that you have the operating system installed, what kinds of things should you practice? Well, configuring and verifying security policies is extremely important. You can set up Active Directory in your environment. You can also configure DNS, and the list goes on and on and on. You might not actually configure some of this stuff in a job, but there's almost 100% chance that you're actually going to have to verify this at your job. So it's good to know how to configure it as well. Now let's talk about the Linux operating system. For many beginners or people that are new to technology jobs, Linux can be fairly intimidating and it's not very common for somebody to use Linux as their main operating system when they're at home. Even if somebody uses a Mac computer, typically people aren't going to explore the command line or the underlying operating system. When you move into the enterprise world, there's definitely a chance that you're going to see some flavor of Linux being used. Typically, most companies that are going to use Linux they're using it for back-end server functions, but occasionally you might run into some engineers that want to have it as their primary operating system. Since we want to be well-rounded security professionals, we need to make sure that we have at least some familiarity with Linux, and that way we're ready for it. The nice thing with Linux is that almost all versions of Linux are free to download. Red Hat Linux is the most common version of Linux that you're going to see an enterprise run but unfortunately, Red Hat Linux is not free. We can also use CentOS or CentOS, and CentOS is actually the free version of Red Hat. Think of it like that. So it's very similar, but you don't have to pay for it. 
Another common version of Linux is called Ubuntu, which is also free. Now there's some differences between the two types, but essentially the concepts are the same. The first step to spinning up a Linux virtual machine is to go download it from the website. Once you have it installed, you can really start to dive into some of the features. With Linux, some of the key topics include using the command line to navigate, file and folder permissions, managing software, and automation with scripting. If you haven't already, make sure that you watch my videos that I did on Linux for beginners, because I will actually walk you through how to do a lot of these tasks and more. You might have heard people debating that networking is dead or that it's going away. Honestly, networking as we know it today is going to be around for some time because especially in larger companies, there's still a need for certain aspects of our networks to be on site. It's also important to note here that networking is a very fundamental subject when it comes to technology and cybersecurity. All data communication relies on networking to transport and deliver data. Cisco is by far the largest player when it comes to networking. And if you wanted to get hands-on experience, but you could only choose one networking vendor, you want to choose Cisco because they are the major player. When it comes to cybersecurity, most people don't generally need extremely deep knowledge of Cisco networking, but having some foundational knowledge is extremely useful. Now, you might be sitting there asking, how do I get experience with this enterprise equipment? It's got to be really expensive, right? Well, the beautiful part about Cisco is that you have a few options. One way is to go to websites like eBay where you can pick up used pieces of equipment at significantly lower cost. And generally it's going to be a little bit older equipment. Now this means that you might not have the latest and greatest features available to you when you're practicing, but it's going to be plenty to get that foundational knowledge built. Cisco also has a virtual environment that you can get. It was formerly called Viral, but now it's called CML or Cisco Modeling Labs and it's 199 bucks for one year of access. If the cost doesn't fit in your budget, you can even get Cisco Packet Tracer software, which is basically a more limited version of that CML software, but it's free. In this video, we've gone over a lot of different ways that you can get some basic cybersecurity experience. No employer is going to expect somebody without real job experience to have a background in some of these enterprise applications that we use on the corporate networks. But there are basic things that are fairly easy to get practice with in your home lab. With that being said, you should try to learn these basic things as deeply as you can so that when you do get hired into that job, you can hit the ground running and learn new things to build on your knowledge. Also, don't underestimate the value of volunteering. Many people will volunteer with their current company or places like their church or school in order to get valuable experience, even though it's unpaid, it still counts. Now, question of the day, what are subjects you would like to build experience on? I'm going to be making some videos to help people build some experience, and I would like your input in the comments below. Remember to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. Head on over to my website at johngood.com for more training courses, and I'll see you next time.